Hi, everybody. We are live here at the Taking Control of Your Diabetes headquarters in lovely Del Mar, California. I am Dr. Jeremy Pettis. I'm an endocrinologist, University of California, San Diego. I've been living with type 1 diabetes since I was 15. I'm joined by my young, upstarting colleague, Dr. <laughs> Steve Edelman. Tell him, say hi. Hello. I'd say <laughs> ditto, except exchange Jeremy for Steve. Yeah. So uh, we're here today to talk about fast acting insulins. Yeah, we're really excited to do this. So we have to say off the bat that, of course, you know, we're going to be talking about our opinions on these things as medical professionals. Anytime something comes up, you want to start a medication, adjust it, whatever, talk to your provider. But so, Steve, let's jump into it. We're talking about rapid acting insulins. Why are we talking about this? What's the issue? What's the problem with our yeah. current ones? Ah, uh, you know what? This problem really came to the forefront with CGM technology because people came to me and said, Dr. Edelman, my insulin's not working. Because I can see, I give myself a bolus, it goes up, my blood sugar goes up after eating, it doesn't come down, I give myself a correction bolus, nothing happens, I give myself another correction bolus, and then guess what? Whew, you know, they crash. And put it this way, insulin it doesn't work very quickly from the beginning of time, but we've been able to see it now. Yeah. And it's just a big, frustration you yeah. know that i mean our rapid acting insulins to be honest they're just not rapid acting and to even call them that i think is a disservice to people yeah. because they think you know i'm going to inject <laughs> this insulin i got to eat right away because i'm going to crash low and that's not the case at all so what happens in in diabetes type one but, or can you say one quick thing of course you, you brought up such a good point because how many how many of you take your insulin after you eat because you're afraid you're going to get low if you take it before that messes up your glucose levels yeah. and, and it actually increases your chance for a delayed low so yeah it's a disservice yeah <laughs> i want to start marching <laughs> start a start a new movement so yeah you know if you have type 1 or type 2 diabetes and you're on mealtime insulin what's what's the pattern what happens through a given day well Eventually, you got to eat. Oh my God, gasp. You know, we all have to eat. You take your insulin, and even if you get your carbs right and the dose right, because it's not rapid acting enough, it's very common to go high. You see your blood sugars are high. You might have to do a correction dose. And then, you know, the insulin kind of kicks in and your correction dose. And then you might go kind of low. You have to eat some carbs. Then you kind of go high again. And then you have to bolus. And it can make you get in this very reactive space. I go high, I bolus. I go low, I eat. You're just always kind of chasing things versus, gosh, wouldn't it be nice to have an insulin that just keeps you kind of flat and you don't go high in the first place so you can be kind of more proactive. I'm just going to keep my blood sugars, you know, kind of even keel so I don't have to be jumping from one thing to the next. And there's a lot of things that we tell people what to do and we use them ourselves, like timing of the insulin is extremely important. We'll talk about that, but you have to do a zillion things just to get it right. Right. And, and you know, I always say, hey, you ready for this medical phrase? You know, insulin has a very narrow therapeutic window. You give too much, you get low. You give too little, you get high. And there's not much room for error. Yeah. And let's not forget that the normal human beta cell, people out there without diabetes, they can monitor glucose on really a second to second basis. And as soon as the blood sugar ticks up a little bit, these beta cells can release insulin right into the bloodstream. It works almost immediately. It can get out of the bloodstream within minutes. So it's really like a really rapid on, rapid off kind of situation. I always call beta cells these beautiful like thermostats of, of glucose. Blood sugars go high, you know, it turns on the AC, whatever. Beautiful. Yeah, it's beautiful. <laughs> so, no, but, but the other thing too is normal people, you know, their pancreas makes glucagon too yeah. so that you're protected from lows. And that's why people without diabetes use sons of... Oh, you can't. Are we allowed to cuss on Facebook? Uh, it, it's why your blood sugars are in a super narrow range. You know, the three hot fudge sundaes. Yeah. <laughs> you can eat three hot fudge sundaes. Your blood sugar shouldn't get above 140 if you don't have diabetes. So and then compare that to what we have to do with diabetes. We take our insulin, our rapid acting insulins that take generally about 20, 30 minutes to even start working mm -hmm. at all. Yeah. And then they peak in an hour and a half or two hours and hang around for four or five hours. So that's what we are currently calling rapid acting, which is nowhere close to what the pancreas can do. So no wonder if you're on insulin, you're struggling to keep your blood sugars you know, under control. Honestly, it's not your fault. A lot of it is that we just we haven't developed you know a really truly rapid acting insulin um, that can that can help until now we're getting there. So we're going to be talking about the three kind of new kids on the block, two um, kind of liquid 
uh, injectable insulins that we're used to called Lumgev and Fiasp, and we'll describe these in more details, and then an inhaled insulin called Afrezza. So let's start with Lumgev and Fiasp, and I'll say these over and over again. Lumgev, L-Y-U-M-J-E-V. I can only spell that because it's on the teleprompter, otherwise I would have no idea, but Lumgev is the name of it, and Fiasp. So tell us about those. Well, Lumgev and Fiasp, they're basically upgrades uh, to the older rapid acting insulins there these are called ultra rapid acting insulins so many of you use umalog made by lily and so lily did some formulation changes uh, and they make the insulin work a little faster and get out of the system a little faster now we we call them incremental benefits and novo makes novolog and their rapid ultra rapid acting insulin is called fias fast, faster acting Aspart. Yes. <laughs> blah, 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 blah. And it works a little faster than Novolog and also gets out of the system a little faster. So it's it's a little more rapid on, a little more rapid off. And I'll tell you what, I mean, we talk about this all the time in clinic and even our conference with the younger doctors. And we tell them that, yeah, uh, some patients notice a difference uh, and others don't. Uh, so the the changes aren't so great that you would make changes with your pump settings, right. things like that. First of all, I got to say, I got my Diet Coke from McDonald's here. Why McDonald's? Because I swear their, their formula for Diet Coke just tastes better and they've got big straws. I just, I love it. I took a sip. It does. It tastes better. Yeah. Have you been tested for COVID? Yeah. <laughs> so, I, so to kind of recap what Steve said, Humalog is kind of upgraded, if you will, to Lumgev. It looks, it works a little bit faster. Novolog is kind of upgraded to Fiasp. Um, both of these are technically approved for pumps now. You can do it with injections. And critically, what Steve said is if you do switch to one of these, you wanna try them, go for it. You might notice that your blood sugars are a little bit better after meals, but I wouldn't change anything that you're doing, your carb ratios, your sensitivity factors. You still have to take an injection before you eat because quite frankly, these aren't fast enough to allow you to just take it when you eat and certainly after, you know, not after eating. Yeah, I should just add about the pump situation. They, they are both approved to use in insulin pumps, however, tandem that makes the control iq does not recommend using faster acting aspart in their pumps because they have noticed more occlusions with it so that's that's just something to There's something to, to be aware of and anecdotally people will say it seems to kind of not work after two or three days or something so again it is approved certainly for pumps you can try it but just to be aware of this caveat it's really important yeah so um, anything else to say about those before we move on to Frezza? Um, well, they, they, they both come in, you know, obviously vials for pumps and they both come in really good pens. Why don't, why don't we mention something about their use in type two diabetes? Yeah, so absolutely. People with type two diabetes can use these. Um, you know, I think you, you'll see the benefit the most if you're on CGM and, and that's actually worth mentioning that anybody on mealtime insulin can get on a continuous glucose monitor. So if you have type two diabetes and you're taking insulin with meals, you should be on a continuous glucose monitor so you can see your blood sugars and, and how they're doing throughout the day. Yeah, I just asked Brittany to get my backpack. Oh, make sure I don't get load during the session. So okay. I'm not rudely texting during our program. Um, okay, so let's talk about Afrezza. So, um, so what is Afrezza? So Afrezza is an inhaled insulin. And basically the way it works is it has these little particles that are called FDKP, doesn't matter, um, that regular insulin is attached <laughs> to. And these particles are designed, kind of micro-engineered, so that they're just the right size to be able to be inhaled, get down the large airway, get into your lungs. And when these particles come into contact with the normal kind of pH of your lungs, the particles dissolve and the insulin is released right into the bloodstream. Now, why does that matter? Well, the lungs are hypervascular, meaning there's a ton of blood supply in the lungs. And when you inhale it, it makes it so it can get into the blood, bloodstream, you know, very, very quickly. So ultimately what this means is that we have, you know, an insulin that truly works very, very quickly and it can get out of the system very quickly. And I think it's important to contrast that again to the subcutaneous injections that we do. Here you got your backpack? Yeah, thanks Brittany. Okay. You can come on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was gonna. I was gonna do. We'll do some show and tell. Okay, you're perfect. talking. Yeah. So, 
you know, again, to kind of talk about our injectable insulin, you inject it into the fat, it has to kind of break apart into what we call insulin monomers, it has to slowly migrate over to the bloodstream, get absorbed, and that's why it takes so long for it to work, opposed to a Frezza, which again, gets right into the lungs, it dissolves, and it's, you're off to the races. Okay, you've yeah. got your backpack, you sent your text, for yeah. God's sakes, tell us what you got. Now. Well, I, I basically, you know, I mean, you know, th this is Lumjev, it looks like a regular instant pen, this is... I think this is regular Novolog. This is from 1998. This is so dusty. <laughs> well, I, I wear a pump, but uh, so I, I I personally always have an insulin pen with me, uh, just in case my pump comes out, my Omnipod pops out, and and my blood sugar's 400. Yeah. I mean, Steve always has insulin with him, except last weekend when we went to dinner, <laughs> and your, your pump failed, and he didn't have insulin with him, so I had to go to my car, which I parked like literally like a mile away, and I actually had some loom jab with me that I gave you a vial and saved your life, basically. Yeah, well, you know what? You know what happened that night? Let's hear it. Just real quickly, because we talked about this. I gave myself 10 units, and I hardly, I usually give myself... Wait, after, when I brought it to you? When you brought it to me. Okay. My blood sugar was like 280 and going up okay and nothing happened so about half an hour later i gave myself 10 more i normally give six seven units per meal and you told me it's been in your car six months yeah. so i'm thinking it's partially denatured and i gave nothing happened and then i gave myself 10 more 30 units and then it took a while but at two to three in the morning i almost had to give myself glucagon really because I just couldn't keep up, you know, just drinking apple juice. So I, I should practice what I preach. You absolutely should. I mean, you should carry more uh, <laughs> insulin that's not for you. sitting in your car for six <laughs> months. I'm serious. I need to have a cooler. I, I've helped you out more than oh you've helped me. Oh my god. So, anyways, well, now that we got that out of the way, so always have insulin with you is important, or for your friend. Um, but anyways, you're welcome, I guess. Yeah, thank, no, thank yeah. you. <laughs> All right, That's so better. show them a Frezza. Yeah, so basically, for those of you that haven't seen it, and we're going to talk a little bit about, uh, you know, the tricks to get it, because we know a lot of people learn about a Frezza from us, and then they go to their doctor, and the doctor goes, hmm, I wouldn't put anything in your lungs, or I don't know anything about it, or you don't need it. You know, it's crazy. But anyway, this is the little device. It pops down. Now, I... This is from my last use. Uh, Jeremy will talk about dosing in a second. This is a, is that green? It's an eight, it's a green. Eight, yeah, and uh, which is closer to five, something like that. And what I do is I get it ready to click all the way. And when I'm ready to take an inhalation, I click it. It's smooth. Now, <laughs> my technique is different than jeremy's yeah if i inhale too quickly i cough well let's talk more about the dosing because you kind of went over that quickly so that's how to do it was that a real cartridge no of course okay. not but i probably got like remnants of the last dose okay good um all right so that's how you inhale it it comes in three doses four units eight units and 12 units which are four units is blue eight units so this is a four units it's kind of blue eight units is green and then 12 is kind of a yellowish orange um and what Steve said, there's actually a conversion, meaning that four units of a Frezza is more like two units of Humalog or Novolog. It's about half as potent, if you will. And that's important because when we both first started taking it, we did like a one-to-one -one conversion and we felt like it didn't work. Um, and it's not that it wasn't working, it's just that we were underdosing. So when we took four units and we thought we were getting four units and only really getting two, I mean, I gotta tell a story, the first time that we took it, I took four units, ate half a sandwich, in front um, of a bunch of younger doctors. You know, we were teaching the fellows how to dose it. Here's this cool new thing. And, you know, I would normally take four units of, let's say, Humalog for a half a sandwich. I took four units of, of a Frezza for my half a sandwich. My blood sugar went up to like 250. I was like, this stuff doesn't work. And I didn't touch it again for at least another six months or a year until we started learning that you have to do this kind of dose conversion. Um, so it's a, it's a really good option. For type ones, the reason that we love it, that we reuse it, is because it works so fast. For type twos, it's an option just because you don't have to inject something. So if you're on mealtime insulin, anybody can use it, type one or type two. It's a good thing to know about. Most providers don't even know about it, or if they do know about it, they're uncomfortable with it, so they might not kind of recommend it. It does not harm the lungs, kind of long story short on that. Um, 
Now, the dosing, and it takes time to kind of explain it, but I actually, we've done multiple talks on it. I gave like a 30, 45 minute talk on our website on how to dose it, how to respond to highs and lows. So if you go to tcoid.org, click on the video vault, and under type 1 diabetes, there's insulin lectures, and I gave this, this whole thing about, you know, a Freza. But really, why do we like it? Well, one... We, we love it. We love it. You said we love it. We love it. Because you, you mentioned the rapid on. Yeah. And, you know, and that's, that's awesome. But I'll tell you what I love about it is the rapid off. You don't got that big tail and you can go exercise and you can take a uh, more frequent doses. You know, we'll talk about the timing of a follow on dose, but it's the rapid on rapid off. And basically it works more like the insulin yep. in a non-diabetic. I want to say uh, one other thing that I wanted to mention when you talked about getting in the lungs, it's not the only drug obviously that we put in our lungs, but I have this slide that the lungs are such a great organ for administering medications that if you take, if you dissect your lung, not mine, and you lay it out flat on a tennis court, that's, a, that's, as, that's how big your lungs would be. The whole tennis court? Yep, the whole tennis court. Okay, we'll try that after this. So that's, we'll... that's why there's so, many, there's so much surface area for absorption. Got it. That's the point. <laughs> and the other thing you should mention when you talk about <laughs> dosing, I think it's that if you read the formal uh, mankind doctor instructions, they say one, one unit of, of sub-Q is like 1.5 of a Fresa. Yeah. And so it's a matter of uh, how you respond to it. We, we f kind of find that two, one to two is probably more appropriate for us, but just to be formal about it. So why do we love it? Well, a um, couple reasons. I love it for those like stubborn highs. You know, your blood sugar is 250, whatever. We all know you take Humalog or Novolog, what happens? You take three units, nothing happens. You take another three units, nothing happens. And you do what Steve did. You do exactly what Steve did. And you, you know, kind of bolus, bolus, bolus. And then finally it all kicks in and then you crash. Um, that can be so frustrating, if not dangerous, versus a Freza where you inhale it, it drops your blood sugars, you know, kind of quickly, but safely, and brings you down into range so you can get along with your day, with your business, and, and get back into range. Because we all know when you're high and you're staring at your CGM, it, you just want to scream. Um, <laughs> so stubborn highs is a thing that's like great for a Freza. And the other thing is if it, like just eating, you know, like if you, especially if you're going to eat carbs, having something that works really, really quickly, um, can can help combat you know sandwiches whatever you want to do and because it gets out of your system within an hour and a half two hours at most you can do another dose in an hour and a half or two hours so you can be a little bit not a little bit you can be much more precise and do kind of these little taps with your 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 yeah. freza so honestly you don't have to be as accurate with your insulin dosing you know you start with four eights 12 something like that whatever you need for your initial dose and then if you go high an hour and a half or two hours later you just take some more and you know you can do these little taps to stay in range you know i usually keep these right by my car keys and i get i get pull out a fresh three pack or each one and i put it in my pocket and that day i went out to meet for dinner i picking up bill polonsky it's, it's probably his fault um and i i rushed okay and it's murphy's law so now bill's the, fault for you being late, my fault for not having oh, refrigerated well, insulin. I, I, I fault you. <laughs> <laughs> I feel faulted. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, the, the other thing, too, that's important is to talk about the timing of the dose compared yeah. to sub yeah. go, go for it. So we mentioned that, you know, you really need to pre-bolus if you're using kind of traditional insulin, 20, 30 minutes before you eat, which is a pain in the butt. Because how do you, you know, do you know how much you're eating, when you're going to eat, what if the food gets delayed, all those kinds of things. But in order to keep your blood sugars in range, you have to do that with traditional insulin. With a Freza, you can take it right when you start eating or even like a little bit after you start eating and waiting for your blood sugars to kind of creep up and then inhale it because it does work that fast. So, you know, to, to give some kind of numbers, um, it can, it's measurable in the bloodstream within minutes. You know, and it, 10 minutes. Yeah, yeah. And it peaks in about 30, 45 minutes. So when our traditional insulins are just starting to work, this sucker's, you know, peaking. And then it's out of the system in an hour and a half or two hours. So you imagine kind of like this insulin curve of Humalog or Novolog like this. A Fresa just shifted all the way over where it's, you know, a more rapid peak and then wrap it off. So, you know, once you know that, it's, it's funny because a Fresa has really delivered what we've always wanted in a rapid acting insulin. Um, 
and but because it's so different it changes the the paradigm for how you know when we dose relative to meals you know these cartridges and this conversion there are some things that you have to kind of learn about it yeah. but people can plug it into you know whatever regimen they use so that's something good to talk about next let's say you're type one you're type two you want to get on a Frezza, how would you convert somebody or suggest that they start? Yeah, well, you know, I, I started a few patients on it yesterday and I saw a patient return, uh, someone with type two, I should say, and he, he was using the four unit cartridge, which is similar to one and a half, two units of sub Q. And he didn't think it did much for him, but he was hesitant to go to the four. And I, I you know, in our experience and even the clinical trials, you know, people with type two, you know, you're going to start off at eight probably and maybe go to 12 quite easily. And I think in that one study what they showed big benefits in type two, the average dose was around 20. So you take a 12 and an eight and you can do them back to back. Uh, with with the type ones, I tell them to, that what you want, I, all my type ones have CGM. Um, and uh, I tell them to experiment when their blood sugar is high, trend arrows horizontal, let's say 200 and take a four see what happens and don't do anything else that would you know influence that curve yeah and everybody is different and even i would say would you agree that not every time it, you respond the same way yeah that's true there's so many other factors that affect our blood sugar but it's just to experiment when you're high and then you can incorporate it you know before meals when you're high just uh when you're snacking there's just so many different ways you could use it right and so I totally agree. For type twos, it's it's great when you're starting insulin, you know, as an option versus injections. Um, for type ones, everybody's already on insulin. So what I tell them is, stay on whatever you're on. You're on your pump. You're on your shots. Whatever. Start by just experimenting with a present when you're high. Maybe you can get samples if you can from the office to just kind of just try it. And then you can see how you want to use it. Maybe you want to just be on a basal insulin and use a Frezza all the time. Yep. I have a lot of patients that do that and get like amazing control. Maybe you want to stay on your pump and just use it for kind of intermittent highs or whatever. That's also an option. There's no studies using it with these hybrid closed loop systems, you know, tandem control IQ or 670G. Um, but anecdotally, we can say that we use it with these systems and get really good results that we'll still use it to correct high blood sugars even though these systems are trying to correct us, yeah. they're not aggressive enough. So you can give it a little bit of, of help. You can still use it before meals. Um, so it, it really is, you know, again, this is our medical opinion, um, trial and error. And, and that's kind of everything with diabetes, right? Figure out the system that works for you and, 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 and gives you kind of the, the freedom, quality of life that you want. Yeah, a lot of these software engineers, they sit there and they say, you cannot use a Frezza because it's going to mess up the algorithm. Well, if your algorithm can handle it, get a new algorithm. And, uh, I, you know, the algorithm is based on the predicted blood sugar. So if you take a Frezza and your, your blood sugars start to come down, it takes that into account and it just seems to always adapt. And I, I've, I've said this before, but I've been using a Frezza for years now and only once in five years did I uh, have a low blood sugar because I took too much of Frezza. And so in the, in it the is forgiving. And the clinical trials of Frezza is consistently shown to have actually less hypoglycemia. People say, well, gosh, if it's bringing my blood sugars down so, you know, so quickly, am I going to crash? Um, and in the clinical trials, the answer is no. And I think it is because, like I said, if you can knock out that initial high and you don't have to do a correction, most lows come after a high. Yeah. You know, you're 200, you're 220, you do something to correct it, and then you kind of crash. Well, if you can get rid of that 220 in the first place, then you just kind of cruise. What's that phrase you say that when the blood sugar starts crashing down, it's like exit stage left. It turns. Yeah, it just kind of flattens out and yeah. usually so gets out of your system. When you first start using it, you're going to go, holy moly, <laughs> you see the arrow, trend arrow going down. Just wait, don't <laughs> panic. And it just goes diagonal and then horizontal. Yeah. Which it's is impressive. It's it's very different than what we're used to with, with our traditional lenses. All right. Anything else you want to gab about before we do some questions? I think that's pretty good. We can add things in as we think about them. And again, the video vault is just, it's completely free and it, an amazing resource of like, I don't know, hundreds of hours of videos on kind of everything that you could want to learn about with diabetes. Like seriously, exercise, diet, songs that we've seen about diabetes. On Spotify yeah. too, four original songs. We just have live cameras in Steve's house. You can check those out. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So well, we should just say though that um, maybe a quick word about uh, tips on getting a Frezza. Oh yeah, yeah. Well, I, I would just say this. You know, 
uh, we're both at UCSD, you know, when you type a prescription in, uh, it goes to the patient's usual pharmacy. Now, certain pharmacies are much better than others for prescribing a Frezzo. They, there's our area is called Burt's, you know, believe it or not. I, I love Burt's because my kids love Burt and Ernie when they, they were younger. And they know how to deal with it. They know how to do the insurance issue. So if you take your script to CVS, you might get $300 bill. You go to Burt's, it's $50. Yeah, we're not saying you use this pharmacy, but it's just an example yeah. that your provider might have to, you know, bob and weave a little bit. But it's getting much easier to get covered. Um, there's local reps that can be very helpful using, like, in recommending a pharmacy that, that is familiar with dosing a Frezza. Because yeah. I remember when I first got it, you know, it's say, this is an eight-unit cartridge, but they would also call this whole thing a unit you know so it's confusing Very language confusing. and so the dosing can be kind of weird sometimes um so you might get some pushback when you go talk to your provider about gosh you know they don't maybe they're not comfortable you know prescribing it or whatever but it, it's i'm finding it easier and easier to get covered now even for medicare patients yeah and don't forget that um the one thing that you need to get before uh, you take your first inhalation is a what they call FEV1, which is a spirometry test. It's it's where you blow as hard as you can into a little device, not full pulmonary function test. That takes like an hour and a half. And um, in our office at UCSD, we have a portable unit. They tested that patient I just started on uh, yesterday. He didn't get it yet, but I prescribed it for him. And so you need that. So you have to get that to make sure you don't have any underlying right. lung disease. You don't have COPD, severe asthma that was kind of undiagnosed. And then you're supposed to get that after six months and, and, and then every year thereafter to make sure that it hasn't declined. Um, but again, in the long-term safety data, really there's no adverse effects in the lungs. Um, so it, this is something that honestly might eventually go away, this requirement to yeah. do this. Um, but that's, that's what it is right now. At the very end, we're going to put up the links for each website to go so you can read about the safety of all three insulins. You can actually go to, I think, the Mankind website, and they will send you one of these FEV1 devices. Yeah, yeah. And they're pretty, they're not super sophisticated. I don't I think if you bought one, it'd be 10, 20 bucks, something like that. You can get one of these at these California, you know, dispensaries, yeah. uh, too. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, speaking of that, you know, people will say, like, you know, maybe this is a little bit more discreet, like whatever, rather than taking out an injection, you know, maybe people are more comfortable inhaling something versus, you know, injecting at a, a restaurant or whatever. I will say sometimes you get some funny looks, you know, are you vaping or what are you doing? But, Southwest Airlines. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, you know, put it this way. I mean, look at uh, albuterol, you know, you, you inhale that, it, 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 you know, it's a steroid based solution for, you know, asthma and wheezing and it works instantly. There are other medications you give through the lungs and so it's not that unusual but if don't sit there and go like that don't wear a trench coat when you're doing it <laughs> make sure your eyes don't look real beady and then you'll be good or you can do all those things whatever you want um yeah this is america okay so questions so you mentioned this why does it sometimes take two rounds of using a Frezza before my blood sugars drop well again that's case by case um, it might just be that you're not taking enough initially i mean there's a lot of factors that can go into it um, but typically, and you mentioned sometimes it, you know, there's variables with absorption, just like there there is with injectable insulins. I find that a Frezza is actually very consistent, the, the effect that I get. But I have heard this, and there's no real answer for it. Well, I, I showed them my technique to avoid cough, and you know, when you mention this, when a lot of people start a Frezza, they get a little bit of a dry cough, like <clears throat> like that. If I could fake a dry cough, and uh, it, when you look at the clinical trials that. It, the incidence goes down over time. But if I inhale too quickly, I cough. So yeah. I, you saw my technique, slow and smooth. Mm -hmm. The other big thing to remember, make sure it's room temperature. Yeah. Otherwise, you know, the, 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 the coldness may clump up the, uh, the powdered insulin. I just find it seems that- It to be like when it's cold, it might be a little bit more irritating to people because it is, if it clumps, then it can feel like it's, you know, yeah. something's in your So what's your throat. technique? Because you're, you're way faster than I am. I've I seen just, you. You know, I put it in there it and I kind of go. So you're faster. Yeah. Yeah. Just so. in life, too. Like if we actually just went outside and physically raced, I think I'd win. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, I, but I'll tell you what. I mean, if I learned this technique because I would do a dry cough. Yeah. And I, don't, I wanted to take it. So that's important. Well. If you do cough, you've still gotten the dose. So sometimes people go, 
and cough and then say, gosh, do I need to take another dose because I just coughed it up? And the answer is no. It gets into your lungs really quickly. It gets absorbed. So um, please what if, don't. What if take you cough dose. the instant you inhale? No, oh, so it's still good. Okay. Yeah. All right. So Lungev irritates my skin around the infusion site. Is this normal? Uh, it is normal. Yeah. And um, I did speak to the folks from Lilly about this, and it doesn't occur in everybody. A couple people, it, it goes away over time, but um, there's something irritating in the infusion line that we're in, in the skin. If you use Lumjev like a regular injection, no problem with a with a pen. So yeah, it's something that people are commenting on. Yeah, you know, is it? It's not harmful. Right. It's just you know, it can be unpleasant. You know, some people it's just like a little burning, like whatever. But you know, especially if you take a big bolus or something, you might feel it. So it's it's common. It's nothing to worry about. But it, it, if it's irritating you, then you know you might need to switch. So it happened to you too, right? For sure. Yeah. yeah. How long can you use an infusion line with Lumjev or Fiasp? Well, um, you all should know that the FDA approves these insulin to use three days in infusion lines. But um, if you're not using an Omnipod, if you're using a pump, you know, you can leave it in there much longer. And there's all kinds of information that you might lose activity after three days. You know, not not 100 percent loss, but maybe, you know, 10 percent, something like that. I, I don't know if you're on a hybrid closed loop system, it should make up for it. Yeah. By giving you more basal yeah, rate. You know. Yeah. How long do you leave yours in your pump? Usually three. Um, but, um, you know, with these newer things, I've heard, again, anecdotally, people saying it just seems like it doesn't last as long, whatever that means. Um, so it's just if you notice that, it might be a reason to go back. And actually, I've had patients say, gosh, I love it. Like day one, day two, seems like my blood sugars are perfect. And then it kind of fades. And so it's this conversation of, well, should you go back to Hemolog or Novolog, kind of weighing the, the positives and, and negatives of that. Yeah, you know, when I when um, long before you were born, Jeremy, we had okay. just regular insulin. We didn't have Novolog or Umolog. We just had regular. And it, it started to work really slow. It hung around for a long time. And in reality, if, um, if using it in the pump, you know, had one benefit. If your infusion line came out, or you lost a little bit of activity near the third day of your pump wear, you still had this long, it still hung around. So it was a little bit more forgiving. Like if, you know, especially if your pump line comes out and, you know, cause it hangs around much longer. So I was even thinking that someday they'll have liquid insulin as fast on fast off as a Freza. We put in our pumps, they'll have to change the algorithm for sure, but <laughs> you better be careful. Uh, that, just be like Steve and always have insulin with you. <laughs> and when, don't hang out with him when you need insulin. And if that fusion line comes out with faster acting insulins, wrap it on and wrap it off, you can get into trouble quicker. So we just have to be vigilant. All right. For people with type 2, do these faster acting insulins make a difference? Well, I think you, you mentioned one of the biggest benefits um, is uh, convenience and not having to take an injection. You know, us type ones, we have to take insulin. We've been taking injections since the day we were diagnosed. <laughs> and type twos, you know, typically 40s, 50s, 60s, they never take an injection. Maybe the oral medications aren't working as well. So it's a little bit harder uh, for them to adapt to that. And so I think you hit, you hit the nail on the head earlier when it's really easy. And um, where the Afreza helps with that, but these Lumjev and Fias, they also are helpful. Yeah. So I'll do a couple of these. I'm Please. new to Lumjev using a tandem pump. Um, sounds like he was using Novolog. How do I change the settings to accommodate for the speed? And again, don't change anything, especially initially. Um, and just see what benefits you might get from it for, for not making any accommodation. So that's important. This one is an interesting question. It says, a Freza, a Freza burn my nostrils. Is this normal? So first of all, I have seen people when they pick this up, they just kind of assume that it like they inhale That's it in their nose. That's not a question. Well, okay, I just you know it is. So hopefully you're not inhaling it through your nose because that's wrong. But if you're inhaling it through your mouth and it's burning your nostrils, I don't know what's going on there. But you could do like you know, you probably could. <laughs> it probably would burn your nostrils. <clears throat> it's not supposed to be in your nostrils. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but okay, we we appreciate the fact that you were brave enough to ask that question. Well, maybe they're inhaling it regularly, like a normal way, and then it just so happens to burn their nose. Maybe they maybe they inhale and then they blow, they exhale through their nose. Yeah. 
please. That's probably it. We have lots of follow-up questions for you on that one. Um, best pump for rapid acting insulin. I mean, really, that's a, that's a question about pumps and systems that, you know, there's yeah. benefits to all of them. You know, I'm currently I, on the tandem control IQ. Steve's using Omnipod and looping. The Omnipod, the, the, the Omnipod 5, it's supposed to be Q4 this year. So literally any day now. I, yeah. um, my, my answer would be it, it, it doesn't matter with the pumps. Pick the pump that you think works the best for you. And insulins won't make it. The insulin choice should not. person says, I am. Whatever lung condition you have, if it's totally stable and you haven't had a, a flare up in, in years, uh, then you, know, you, you might be able to try it and experiment with it. But um, in general, the answer is no. So can a Fresa be left out of refrigeration for days without reducing its potency? So real quick. So we keep these still in the refrigerator. When you take them out and it's still, you know, in this little sealed thing, I think it's good for 10 days ish. Don't quote me on that. And if you pop one of these out, then it becomes good for three days. So that being said, I have had again these in, you know, personally, I can say it, in my bag for a long time, for months, and found that it still works. It's not ideal. Just like so, his insulin. <laughs> so months. Te technically. In his hot car. Oh my gosh. Aren't you glad I had it though? I am glad you had yeah, it. Yeah, otherwise you would have to go home. <laughs> Jesus, how's this my pro I'm apologizing <laughs> for your mistakes here. I'll get you a cooler. Oh my gosh. Um, so that's the technical answer is 10 days like this, three days, you know, when you pop it out. Um, but just like kind of all our other insulins, they tend to be very stable. Um, and, and it's not like all of a sudden they, they poof and vanish, you know, when the expiration yeah, date come, yeah. kind of comes and goes. And you know what, I mean, you know, if, if this little thing after three days, because the, these other two have been taken out, I, I doubt if it's ineffective. Yeah. But, you know, the companies have to be very uh, formal. They got to follow the FDA rules and we respect that totally. It, they do testing on every batch. And so, um, you know, it's a long story, but the, when, if you put a longer expiration date, it puts more hassles on the company. They got to store more for that amount of time. Then they got to do testing. And that's why, you know, the, the length of some of these liquid insulins are incredibly short. They're still good especially if they're in the fridge, you know, or, or, you, or uh, something other than room, room temperature. All right. So this probably will be one of our last ones. So, so how to do Fiasp and ice cream. So I think this is a good question because it's talking about ice cream, which is really fat, you know, really high in fat. Um, it can have delayed absorption. And Steve and I just did for the, the one conference, the, the pizza challenge, where we each had, each had to eat three slices of pepperoni pizza, you know, we measured them to make sure they were like identical in 20 minutes. And we had to stay in range between 70 and 180. And the techniques we used on how we bolus through our pump, what kind of timing we did for insulin. Um, I think I, I tell them maybe your Fresa. calculations. We got another hour and a half. <laughs> so it's fine. But just go on the TCOID website. The first thing you'll see right now is this like ride with us, you know, ultimate joy ride. Just click on that. Um, you can go on for free because this is kind of our latest conference that we had. And we'll, you'll see the pizza challenge. Did we send that out in an email yet or anything else? I, I believe, um, not, yeah. I think yeah. we did. Yeah. Well, anyways. Oh, yeah, we, it was a last newsletter. Okay, last yeah. newsletter. Yeah. So check that out because that, that covers a yeah. lot, including a Fresa, timing of insulin. And, and we actually both stayed in range. I think it's the first time we've been successful with one of these, yeah. one of these yeah. things. Um, so. Well, we also did eating three donuts in 15 minutes. Oh, right. And, and Jeremy used a Fresa. I used sub -Q insulin with timing. Yeah, that's the donut challenge. And Every challenge I've won, Steve's come in second place, which is good, cut, um, but cut. only two people. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think that, that's, that's pretty much it. Um, and so how long uh, use a Fresa and has it affected your PFTs? We both use it for years, hasn't affected our FEV1. Um, do you reduce your basal when utilizing a Fresa? No. Um, your basal should be consistent and you use your rapid acting insulin to deal with the, the food you're taking. How do skiers take their insulin on the mountain? Not sure what that question means. If I went skiing, I would just still have my insulin in my pump. I could, you know, take a Fresa in a bag, whatever. Um, I guess if you're worried about it freezing or something yeah. like that, um, which can happen. Um, so you just got to keep it in somewhere. Yeah, we, we, keep it in we've had a couple 
you know, snowboarders. I'm blanking on his name now. Um, who's the snowboarder that speaks for us? Yeah, uh, up in like Alaska. Uh, yeah, Sean Busby. Yeah. And he, yeah, he has to keep the insulin like in his armpit area so it doesn't freeze. And uh, yeah, and I think inhaled insulin would work just as well. Yeah. Well, that's it. Make sure you mention the websites and things about the safety information. Are we going to, we, we wanted to put the website up for all three uh, types of insulin. Yeah. Because again, this is our opinion on a yeah. lot of this. And you want to make sure that you're doing things by the book, talk to your provider, all those things that kind of mentioned yeah. up front. Don't do anything we said. Yeah. <laughs> talk to your doctor. Um, and if you have insulin in your car, keep it fresh for at least six months at a time in oh case I go out to dinner with you. <laughs> so, um, I think the big picture is there's new options. Be aware of them. We keep tinkering with, with insulin. Um, you know, it, this is all the same insulin molecule and we're fucking with it. Um, fussing with it. What am I trying to say? Yes, that, that didn't sound, yeah, it didn't sound Fut, right. Futsy. Futsing with it. Um, he's not Jewish. You gotta get the Yiddish <laughs> phrase down. Um, to make it work, you know, longer acting, shorter acting, you know, just, you know, not talking about this today, but they're working on once a week basal insulins now still just modifying, you know, the same kind of insulin molecule to, to make it work faster or slower. Um, so just be aware of your options. Um, and especially with the Fresa, it's just not that well known and it has its advantages. It's not, you know, no medication is for every single person, but everybody should be aware of all the different options and they can try to use it and see if it fits into their life or not. There's not, you know, people always ask these questions. What's the best insulin? What's what pump should I be on? And it's so nuanced. Yeah. Um, well, you so, said it's diabetes is trial and error yeah. with type one and type two. I want to remind you guys about the video vault in the type one track where Jeremy gives really good lecture and gets into the uh, dosing of it and the timing of it extensively. Yeah. And, you know, he's a pretty funny guy too. So thanks Steve. It was good. It was okay. good lecture. All right. Well, I think that's it. So thanks. Go back to your day and, um, we are going to get some pizza now. Yeah. 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 <laughs> All right. Take care everybody. Okay. Bye.